Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you a tour of my parents' vegetable plot here. So I've been helping out quite a bit this year. Um, some of the some of it's been done by my parents, some of it's done by myself. The, the parts that I've helped with are the cabbages, the leeks and the carrots and parsnips and also the runner beans. And my parents have done most of the other vegetable crops. But first of all I'll show you the cabbage patch. I think that's probably the one that's done the best at the moment. It's really grown quite well this year. So this is the cabbage patch here. Now because of all the pests we get here, we get pigeons, we get cabbage root fly, we get also the cabbage white butterflies. We need to keep it well netted, otherwise the, the animals will come and eat the plants or lay their eggs and the, the young will then eat the plants. So that's why it's in a netted area here. It also helps a bit with the wind because it's a very exposed site and these plants get blown over quite easily so we do need to make sure that they're well protected from the wind. So to protect them from the wind we do have the uh, the willow barrier here which is growing up nicely. That's going to give a nice bit of protection but although it was coppice this year so it wasn't giving protection at the earliest part of the year. And we've also pinned up this extra meshing. You can see there's the white bit there and there's the green section over there which, is, which has actually fallen down recently. And that's to give more wind protection whereas this is more for the, the uh, pest protection. But it's done really well. There is some weeding to do. You can see the chickweed at the front here has, uh, has really taken off and gone a bit crazy. We've got some nasturtiums which I will leave because to be honest I'm just going to let them grow along the path area. They'll look quite nice, loads of flowers. Um, but I'll go inside now and show you a better view without all this mesh in the way. So I'm quite happy with all the, how all the uh, brassicas have done this year. So we always get club root normally in this area, but it looks like we haven't got any club root this year. That's basically a, a fungal disease that's in the soil that causes the roots to get all distorted and you get weak plants. The plants are growing strongly, so I don't think that's been an issue this year. And I did a lot of soil prep as well to try, try and amend the soil to avoid that. And I grew the plants on as seedlings elsewhere to, uh, to make sure there was no contamination of the soil uh, when they were young. So I'll start in this corner here, so basically the first two rows and then a little bit of the third row here is cauliflowers. There's loads of big plants, you can see there's loads of big leaves at the moment, so they're gathering lots of nutrients ready for the cauliflower. And I'm going to just try and look now, I might be able to find a young one starting to grow somewhere. So we can see here, this one's actually quite well advanced. Um, there is a little bit of damage, we have had slugs, you can, as you can see there's a, there's a slug right in the corner, uh, just down there, so I'll... Uh, I'll make sure I pick him off. But it looks like I will have to set up a few more slug traps because there's quite a lot of slug damage going on there. And even look, looking at some of them you can see they're quite far behind which is good because I didn't want them all to crop at the same time. But you can see this one down here which is getting close. It's got several slugs in there damaging the head. So hopefully we're not going to lose the harvest. The plants are looking really good. They're going to put on lots of strong growth, get big heads. But if the slugs destroy them we might not get much. So we definitely need to set up a few slug traps. Coming to the left here, we've got another two and a bit rows of Brussels sprouts. The Brussels sprout plants are looking really good at the moment. You can see the nice big big leaves, they're starting to grow some stems. And some, the very little uh, growth just where, the stem, where the leaf stems meet the main stem, that's uh, the very beginnings of the Brussels sprouts. But I wouldn't expect these to be ready for picking until early autumn at the earliest, but more likely it's going to be October to December time. So these have got a lot more growth to do. These will probably double in height to get close to a meter, maybe three or four feet, something like that. So there's plenty more growing with the um, with the Brussels sprouts, and we should be harvesting them. They'll probably be one of the last things we harvest in this plot, to be honest. And when we st when I start harvesting the cauliflower, that will give more space for the remaining cauliflower to grow larger. And once there's we've completely cleared enough space from the cauliflower, I'm going to replace that with kale plants or other late cropping winter uh, brassicas, but probably kale is the most likely one I'm going to go for. I could also go with some winter turnips or something like that, but I think kale is the most likely plant. We could also put broccoli in as well, and that would grow a little bit over the summer, over winter, and then we get a really early crop of uh, broccoli first thing in spring. So coming to the left, we've got two types of cabbages. Again, it's about two and a half rows of each. So we've got these red cabbages here, uh, massive leaves as well, they're really really getting big. They are a little bit crowded towards the middle but at least it's kind of stopped the, the weeds from coming up. There is a bit of problem with slugs and these but it's not as great. At the moment the slugs don't seem to be eating any of the new growth and they're not really starting the head up yet, they're only just starting to grow the, the, the cabbage hairs, they're still quite loose in their leaf. There is some damage on the older leaves though, so you can see here 
these older leaves are getting damaged, which is, to be honest, not a big problem. Um, as long as they don't go through the heart of the cabbage where the head's going to form, that shouldn't be an issue. But you can see the size of the leaves here. I mean, my, my hands are really large, so it's not very good for scale, uh, as I'm six foot five. Um, but you can see the size of that, that leaf there, really big leaves. So I'm expecting some giant heads of cabbage once these are ready. But these cabbages won't be ready for quite a long time. These are quite late season cabbages. The red and the green cabbages are probably going to be ready uh, September, October time. We'll harvest them through the winter as well. So they, they've got a whole summer left to grow really. It's currently mid to late June and so we've got July and, uh, and August which are still quite good growing months in Scotland. So plenty more growth to come on these. These are going to heart up get some really big cabbages. We're looking forward to them. You can see the green ones here as well. The, the, the leaves are actually pretty similar size to the, um, the red cabbage there. Really big healthy leaves, luckily not too much slug damage either. And again, they're not really hearting up yet, but these are quite late season plants, so I wouldn't expect them to heart up too early anyway. So I think the brassicas are actually the biggest success this year, apart from the obvious damage on the, the cauliflower, they've grown really well. I've given them lots of nitrogen feed, and that's kept them growing nicely, and I'll probably continue with the nitrogen feed throughout the summer. Uh, just to keep the growth going really well. Now we do have some brassicas on the outside, so I'll show you them as well. These are the brassicas that don't get affected by the pest quite as badly, so we can afford to put them on the outside. Ideally, I would have all the brassicas in the netting, but there's only so much netting we, uh, we have and how much space we can cover with it. So these ones are on the outside. So we've got some curly kale here, and I've got more curly kale from the, the same batch, which I'll be planting out and replacing the, the cabbages and the cauliflower as, as I harvest them. And then down here we've got some kohlrabi, which is just about ready to harvest. It's best to harvest it when it's young. So this is a particularly attractive variety of kohlrabi called Purple Vienna. And you can see it's got these lovely purple stems, nice purple veins. It's got kind of a glaucous appearance to the leaves, really waxy leaves. And then you've got this lovely purple colour uh, body in the middle. And it's, it's the uh, fat tuberous section that you actually eat. It's basically a swollen stem. So it's very similar to a turnip, um, but it does have a different flavour to a turnip, and it's supposed to be better flavour as well. I've not really eaten much kohlrabi in the past, because it's not, it's not a common plant here in the UK. It's much more common in Germany and other parts of Europe. So these, these are the kohlrabi. It's the first time I've grown them, to be honest, but they're looking quite good. Really big leaves at the moment. Um, the bowl is only just starting to fatten up, but to be honest, you, you harvest them when they're quite young. So we'll be harvesting the first of these in probably just a couple of days, to be, to be fair. And um, the leaves as well can be eaten, so we'll be making some kind of soups or something with them. Coming further around, we've got a few more curly kale plants here. And then we've also got the rocket pats, which is starting to go to seed now because these are quite old plants. So we'll need to harvest them and replace them with some more rocket. So we'll have a successive um, crop of the rocket plants. So the only real um, failure in the vegetable plants this year has been the parsnips. It seems like I've had a bad batch of seeds. I watched uh, somebody else on YouTube recently in the UK and they didn't have any good germination this year with parsnips either. So I have re-sown them, I don't know what's going to come of them because it's the same uh, packet of seeds as the first lot I've, I sowed. Uh, you can see the plants that have uh, germinated are looking really quite nice, they're, they're growing well. We do need to weed this patch, um, a lot of the weeds we've left to be honest because they're actually vegetable plants, so like the rocket here and the uh, potato, but we'll need to harvest them. I'm not sure what we'll do with this patch, you can see a couple of the new ones that I sowed, they're just starting to grow, you can see that's one there, a nice young um, parsnip plant. But uh, it doesn't look like we'll get a lot of parsnips, so I might interplant this with some kind of salad crop or maybe coriander or something like that, just so we get something growing on this site. And just next to that is the runner bean patch. The runner beans, again, the seed germination was pretty bad. Um, I think the reason for that is the compost I used was too rich and the, uh, the, the seeds didn't germinate very well. So I only had about five plants germinate, which are these taller ones you can see starting to grow up the stems. They were looking quite healthy and they're growing nicely, but um, I have re I have recently re-sowed underneath here. This is basically, the same time as I planted these ones outside, I planted new seeds, and all the new seeds have come up no problem. So you can see there, this, I put two in each section, and pretty much two in every section has germinated. And these are going to grow really fast. They come and name it runner bean for a good reason. They just run, they just uh, grow so quickly. So even though we've just passed the midsummer's day, these have still these are going to grow really fast and we'll get a good crop at the end of summer. Here in Scotland, because it's so cold, even into June, if we planted these out too early, they would just sit there and suffer. And what I've done in previous years is I have tried to grow them on inside to get them up to a good size. I planted them out in May uh, when we've had some warm weather, but as soon as we had some cold weather, the plants got stunted 
and then to be honest for the rest of the summer they just sat there and they never grew if the uh, if they do get a cold shock they just never seem to really fully recover and they just sit there doing nothing all summer so even though it's past the, the summer solstice uh, this is the only time it's warm enough and because they're such fast growing plants we should still get a good crop by September time but it's a bit of finicky with uh, with runner beans if you're somewhere in, in a cold climate you really gotta time it correctly otherwise they just don't do well at all coming across the peas they're doing quite well um, the obelisks that my mother made out of willow have all grown as well uh, so I'm not sure what we'll do with them, might need to trim some of the branches off, we don't want the roots to get too big on the willow and take away from the pea plants. But we've been cropping handfuls of peas every day, they, these are Mons 2, and the Mons 2 have been cropping really nicely. Um, every day we're cropping probably a few hundred, probably about one or two hundred grams of, of peas. There's also another line of peas, as I'll show you later over there, so it's, it's not just this patch, but they've been cropping really well. We might need to replace these in about a month's time because um, they are generally quite a short-lived crop and with the heat of summer they might start to go over luckily we don't get it too hot in Scotland but they tend to be quite a short life cycle plants so they'll probably need to replace there something we can see here loads and loads of peas um, cropping on here these were harvested yesterday so you can see how quickly they grow and lots of flowers coming on them so peas are doing really well quite short at the moment I'm not sure what variety these were so I don't know how tall they're going to get, it really depends on the variety, this might be as big as they're ever going to get, or if they're a large tall variety they might get to the top of the obelisk, but we'll just have to see. And around them we've got some self-seeded nasturtiums again, my parents just, uh, they just let themselves see wherever they are really, and they're not a big problem. We take them out if they're in something like a carrot patch, but when they grow underneath the peas they don't cause a big problem. They keep some of the pests away as well, and, uh, and they also look really nice. So this one's the first one to start flowering. But we should have lots of flowers from these, and they are edible. The leaves are very peppery, and the flowers are very peppery, so we let them grow in the vegetable plot, because then we can get a nice harvest of, uh, of peppery leaves throughout the summer as a salad crop. So coming to the carrot parts, we did have some uh, sporadic germination with some of them, but most of it's germinated quite well. I have sown uh, some more carrot seeds in the patches where they didn't germinate properly. I'm not sure if they're germinating though, um, probably because it's midsummer and the soil keeps drying out quite a lot, so the germination is not going to be too great. But the plants are looking really good at the moment, I need to start thinning them, I haven't done any thinning yet. Um, but when you do thin them you have to make sure you cover them because otherwise the carrot root fly will smell the plant and devour the crop. So I need to thin them, but otherwise they're looking pretty good. We do have some germination here at least, so there's a little patch there with all the new seedlings coming up. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it, keep it well watered and hopefully we'll get a a good, uh, good crop of carrots. With these ones I did plant them so there was one row of late maturing, one row of early maturing carrots. So they're very close rows at the moment but what will happen is every other row will be harvested kind of July time and that will give the other ones much more space to grow. And they're the Autumn King carrots so they're going to be really large carrots and they'll keep us through the winter. There is the other, um, every other row is the shorter season carrot which is the Amsterdam forcing carrot and that will give us a, a crop in the summer so we should get a summer crop and a, an autumn crop and the two will merge quite nicely so we'll start cropping probably this week when I start thinning them just getting very small baby carrots and then once they're finished with the thinnings we'll go on to mature, harvesting the mature uh, early har harvesting carrots and then we'll go on to the late harvesting carrots in the uh, later half of the year. So coming along we have the, the uh, broad beans, these were planted quite late, uh, we missed the winter season so normally what we do is we sow them September, October time, we let them grow in the polytunnel and then plant them out either late autumn or early spring and then that gives us the head start on the season and we should be getting, we should be having huge crops of them out already but because these were planted in spring, in late spring and instead of being sown in the autumn before they're a little bit behind, so instead of harvesting them now, we'll be harvesting them probably Ju uh, July and August. But we have got the first crop starting, so you can see here, there's lots of bean pods starting to form. Broad beans are really, they're really unusual compared with most beans, they're a big, thick, kind of leathery bean. Uh, and it's not the pods you eat, it's the actual beans themselves. So I'm looking forward to the broad beans, lots of pods coming as I say, but nothing for harvesting yet. Uh, they do get quite tall, um, they should normally get to about 6 foot in height, although you also do get dwarf varieties, but these are looking quite good at the moment. No black fly, which is good, because often black fly can be a problem with these, where they just uh, they attack the tops of the plants, but at the moment they're all looking quite healthy, even with the bad winds we've had this year. Along here we have some more peas, these haven't done as well, these are a mixture 
unfortunately the uh, the first crop was killed off by some bad wind and some cold weather so we lost a lot of the original crop of peas and then we we had some spare mons too so we interplanted with mons too the only problem is now it's hard to tell what's mons too and what's a normal pea but you can see here with these giant pods we've got a few normal peas starting to come on and some of them are fattening up as well so we've not harvested any of the um the normal regular garden green garden peas yet but they'll be harvested later on in the season coming around we've got the allium patch so this is basically anything in the garlic or onion family so we've got the garlic down the front here which is actually probably getting pretty close to being ready for harvesting uh, it's, it's normally quite an early crop because you plant the garlic cloves in autumn they grow a little bit over winter and then they're decent sized plants early spring and you get a head start on the season and then you can harvest them july time or end of june depending where you are in, in the world so these are looking almost ready and starting to go yellow which is often a sign that they're nearly done I don't think they're going yellow with rust, there might be a little bit of rust in some of these but um, often they get decimated by rust but these are looking not too bad. I think they're mainly going yellow because they're just about ready for harvesting. Behind that is the onion crop. Onions are doing quite well. Uh, we did have some strong wind but they didn't seem to be too phased luckily. A few of them have gone to seed but generally there's not been too many going to seed. And they're at the stage now where they're just starting to fatten up the bulbs. So they've got loads of foliage. They've been spending most of the spring just growing loads of foliage. But now the bulbs are starting to fatten up. So you can see here there's a few just starting to fatten up their bulbs. Um, but we've got a lot of growth still to come on these. We won't be harvesting these until the end of July or come August time. But we should get a good crop. My parents always try and grow about three or 400 onions. That way this should be enough to roughly last uh, most of the year. Around the other side there's also another row of garlic and some slightly younger onions. I'm not sure which onions my, my dad planted, but there's a couple of different varieties. I think they're all white onions this year. The red onions don't seem to keep as well, so they, they go with the white onions. Down the end here are the leeks. So I planted these leeks out probably only about a week or two ago, so there's not much growth. They're quite small looking plants. The leeks as well, they have a really long growing season. It's certainly not a plant you want to plant if you want to have a quick a quick crop because it takes almost a year to grow a leek to a decent size anyway. You can get younger, faster maturing leeks, but they're going to be very small plants. So I planted these at the end of winter, early spring, and because the seeds are so small with leeks, they grow up like just like little stems of grass, really, really small plants. And because they start off as such small plants, it takes a long time for them to get to a decent size. So they're actually growing on in this tray over here. Now this tray has got the rest of them. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got space for these, but if we do, I'll plant these out somewhere in the garden. They grew in this tray for probably about three months, and then come June, we plant them outside. So these are in, uh, in trenches at the moment, because to get a nice white stem on the leek, you have to cover with soil. So as these grow taller, I'll then earth them up a bit like you would a potato, and then we'll get some nice uh, white stemmed leeks. But these will keep growing for a long time, as I say. It takes, um, you sow them in January or so, these will grow all summer long and there won't be harvesting in them until the winter or maybe even early next spring. So it's a long season to grow leeks. Um, they've got plenty to grow, to grow still. You can see they're really quite small plants at the moment. But I'll be keeping them well fed with a high nitrogen feed. And we should be getting some nice leeks by the end of summer. And that will give us a nice winter crop as well. One of the good things about leeks is you just leave them in the garden. They're pretty hardy plants. Even when you've got storms and, and hard frosts, they'll stand through the winter no problem. Uh, most years unless it's too wet. So we can harvest them starting in the probably October time right through to kind of uh, March, April time next year. And finally here we've got the potato patch. Luckily this year has been quite dry so we haven't had any um, potato blight yet. But we have had some strong winds which has been a problem. So the last couple of days weren't actually that windy compared with what we had previously. We, we did have some 50 mile an hour gusts of wind in, in May. But luckily the potatoes were still quite small so the wind didn't damage them too much. And then we had some 30 or 40 mile an hour gusts of wind a couple of days ago. And because the potatoes were so tall that snapped a lot of the stems. So that's what you see in here, a lot of snapped stems unfortunately. So hopefully they're going to be okay. Most of the stems haven't completely broken off so it's not a complete dead loss but it's definitely going to uh, harm the harvest that's for sure. You can see in this section here these seem to have come out okay. These ones seem to grow a little bit taller and a bit leggier and they were really decimated by the wind. There are a few different varieties and these were planted first so these are taller which is why they got more decimated by the wind. Whereas these ones here are planted later and so they're not quite as tall so they seem to have survived okay. 
So it's a bit of a shame with the wind, as I say. But these, as you can see, this side of the potato crop is still looking really good. So even though it's been damaged on that side, um, the crop's not lost. We'll still get a, a decent number of potatoes, I would think. Just not as many as I would hope for. And then this side here, we should get a really good crop, hopefully. We'll just see how the season goes. The main problem, as I say, is uh, potato blight. It seems to be hitting us most years recently with the damp weather and the warm weather we've been getting. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm constantly out on the lookout for potato blight. It has been dry enough this year that it's not been a problem yet, but it always seems to come kind of um, July time, just as the potatoes are out there, full size, ready to put loads of energy into their tubers. Potato blight hits, you have to cut back all the crop to the ground to stop the disease spreading to the tuber and it severely uh, reduces the amount of, amount of tubers you can, you can uh, harvest that year. And if you, do, and if you don't cut the uh, crop down to the ground, the disease gets into the tubers and then they don't store for the winter. So it's a real problem to potato blight. It also decimates the tomatoes. If it gets into the polytunnel or the greenhouse, the tomatoes will be completely wiped out. Um, they'll stop growing. Any tomatoes hanging on the vine uh, might be okay if we harvest them quickly, um, but anything that's green and waiting to turn red is probably going to get infected and die as well. So that's the biggest problem really. Um, I will quickly show you the inside of the polytunnel and greenhouse now just as a quick update. I have done a previous update video just a week ago. But um, I'll just show you very quickly now, just to see how much growth has occurred. And I won't make it a full video because it takes a long time to, to do that whole tour. But you can see here, for example, the greenhouse has suddenly perked up. The chilies are growing much bigger now. And even the uh, new courgette plants I put in to replace the, the aubergines have started to get a nice dark green appearance. So they're looking much better. Now, even though today isn't a hot sunny day, as soon as I go in here, the camera will steam up. But I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how much it's grown in the last week or so since the last in my update video, and the growth has been absolutely phenomenal. So you can see here, right at the back, all the um, sweet corn's grown up really fast and hit the ceiling already. Tomatoes are already growing up. We've got the, um, the morning glory there already coming right across growing nicely and the courgette plant has just continued to grow really nicely as well. So that's all for this update video on the vegetable plot. I'll give you guys an update probably in uh, July or August time when we're starting to crop more plants. Hopefully then we'll get some big um, onions forming, maybe some cabbages will come be coming as well and I'll also be harvesting the first of the carrots and we'll just see what happens with the parsnips. Uh, we'll probably have to interplant that with something else.